We are coming to the end of this little introduction to VVVV and VL, and I would like to finish the series with the mouse and the keyboard as input devices. When bringing interaction into patches, it is almost impossible to also talk about nodes with which you can control them depending on the input, and we will also be touching the topic of Boolean logic. In this video, we will extend both examples of the last two chapters. The first one will set the translation of the entities based on the position of the mouse, invert the colors of the whole scene when you click into the window, and also scale the box in sphere while the left mouse button is pressed. The second example will extend the patch from the video about spreads to use both the mouse and the keyboard. In the end, we can then cycle through the positions by pressing the mouse buttons while holding the spacebar. Getting the data of the mouse into your patch is very easy in VVVV. Simply create the mouse node from the stride category and connect the entity output downstream to the rendering window. For this purpose, you need to create another input pin either on the group node or at the root scene. To keep the overview, I like to connect input devices to the first pin of the root scene, but in general it can be connected anywhere to retrieve the mouse information. Afterwards, you can expose the outputs of the mouse for the position and the left and right mouse buttons. You can see that the position returns a vector 2 with the coordinates of the mouse in the window, and the other two return two booleans that tell us if the mouse buttons are pressed. For a start, we will use the position to control the translation of the rendering, and as the position is returning a vector 2 but the translation expects a vector 3, we have to combine the two-dimensional vector with another value for the z-axis. We could of course split and join the vector, but I will just use the xyz node with the lowercase z character, as described in the video about type conversion. Afterwards, you can move the mouse in the window, which will affect the x and y positions of the sphere and box. Also, we want to use the left mouse button to switch between two scalings of both entities, so while we hold down the left mouse button, they should be scaled up a little bit. Switching between two or more inputs is possible with the adaptive switch node, that has an index pin and a pin group for multiple other values. The index defines which of these inputs will be returned on the output. So if we for example create a switch that has a few colors on the inputs, we can cycle through these colors by increasing or decreasing the index integer. In our case, we want to use the boolean from the left mouse button to switch between two vector 3 values, of which the value of the second input is higher than the first. In case we want to switch between two values and have them both exchanged on the outputs anytime a condition is met, we can also use the swap node. We will be using it here to invert the colors of the patch anytime we click the left mouse button. So connect the outputs to the color I.O. boxes and send in the colors that we want to swap on the outputs. As you have seen in the introduction, we don't want to invert the colors while the mouse button is down, but to toggle between both colors every time the mouse is clicked. This is a great opportunity to introduce you to the Talk Edge node, which we can use to detect if a boolean on the input changes from false to true or the other way around, and returns a trigger for each case on the outputs. You can see this behavior in action when you just quickly send a toggle into the Talk Edge node, and create two banks for the outputs, which return true anytime the input changes. Like this, we can now generate the trigger for every time the mouse is pressed or released by sending in the boolean from the mouse node. Also, we need another node here to implement the desired behavior, which is the toggle node. This one simply inverts a boolean on the output anytime it receives a trigger on the input. If we now connect the toggle to the down edge, we invert the boolean every time the mouse is released, 
and we can send this information into the swap node. Afterwards, the example works as introduced in the beginning of this video. I would like to mention that not using a talk edge in cases like this is a common pitfall for beginners. And it is really important here to use it before sending it into the toggle. Notice what happens when I send the boolean from the mouse directly into the toggle. As the output from the mouse button stays true when the button is down, it will execute the toggle operation every frame of the application. Which means that the boolean on the output is inverted 60 times per second, which is totally not the desired behavior here. Using the talk edge node, you only extract the information if the boolean changes and generate a trigger for both directions. Finally, we will extend the other example from the video about spreads with interactive logic. We're going to adapt this example so that the counter node, which selects a different position for the box, should be triggered by the mouse while we are holding down the spacebar. As both mouse and keyboard have to be connected downstream to deliver the state to the application, we start by grouping the entity outputs together at the very top, before sending them into the root scene. Afterwards, the mouse works exactly like it did before and you can expose the boolean outputs for the left and right mouse buttons. To use the data from the keyboard, we will use the node key pressed, which will return a boolean that reflects the state of a key which you specify on the right input of the node. In here you can basically select all available keys and we will scroll down to the entry called space. If you expose the output, you will see that it turns true when you press the spacebar. Both the mouse and the key pressed nodes return booleans on the outputs and when we want to combine different sources for events, we need to think about the logic of the interaction. For this purpose, there are a lot of different nodes in the category primitive boolean with which we can express different conditions and algorithms to control our patches. In our case, we will use the OR and the AND nodes, so create one of both and expose all inputs and outputs to explore them a bit. In principle, the OR node returns true if one of all the connected inputs is true. And on the contrary, the AND node returns true if all inputs are set to true. We can now use this behavior to control the interaction for our patch. So first of all, send both outputs from the left and right mouse buttons into the OR node and connect the output of it with the TOC edge. This will make sure that we can now use both mouse buttons to trigger the counter node as we simply check if one of both is pressed and send this information instead into the talk edge node. In the end, we only want this action to be triggered when not only one of these buttons is pressed but also the spacebar from the keyboard. So we can finally use the end node and connect it with the output from the key pressed and the output from the OR node. If you have exposed all Boolean I.O. boxes so far, you will get a clear visualization of the overall logic, so take some time to properly think it through and understand what is happening here. I hope you enjoyed this video series and that you learned something from it so you can keep on exploring VVVV and VL. It really is an environment with almost endless possibilities and although we have already covered so many topics and concepts, we have only scratched the surface so far. To go deeper into it, I would like to point you to the program of the Node Institute in which we cover beginner, intermediate and advanced topics of VVVV and other node-based environments.
I would also like to take the chance to thank everybody who has already supported the development of this tutorial so far. If you learned something from my videos or found them helpful in other ways, please consider supporting me by making a donation via the link in the video description. Thanks a lot, hope to see you around in our courses sometime and good luck on your further patching journey.